Welcome to another Precise Language Podcast. Today we're here with a great friend of mine, Noah Harris. Uh, me and Noah have worked together on the Invincible Immersion Project, which we talked about in a couple of other podcasts. Uh, and we've been, Noah's really taught me a lot about video creation and editing for a good year. We were producing videos together and it is why your uh, your video screen is even more clear than mine. I absolutely dig it, dude. I love the production value. But <clears throat> we really we really kind of did an exchange together where you showed me your art and your gift, which was in video production and in editing and all of the technical stuff. And in exchange, I would share with you precise language and all of the tools that I teach in the Invincible Academy and in the Invincible Training. And today I wanted to have a conversation with you on how precise language has played a role in your life. What are your perceptions uh, about it and your, your uses for it? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure. And uh, definitely was a good time uh, going back and forth. And Spencer's definitely showed me uh, his art uh, very thoroughly. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's no joke, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me on, Spencer. Um, but um, yeah, I guess like where do I start? Like the first time you showed it to me, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's like a good sure. place, place to start. Yeah. Uh, I remember vividly where it was. Uh, we were in, we were at your immersion in Isla Mujeres in Mexico, and I remember being surrounded by. I think everybody else in the group shares a similar experience to me, uh, because after uh, Leaf was going through his. Uh, your session with Leaf and we were all kind of just our first time being immersed into this it was a little strange and yeah. uh, heavy heading and um, I had this moment for about four hours in my mind and I think I audibly said this several times where I just went like this oh it all makes sense <laughs> after kind of being exposed to the power of this like everything just started making sense right. after you know, I kind of went to the same thing with Leaf did, where it's kind of like, oh, there's so many different uses to this. And in episode three with with uh, Brandon, where you know you can even use it for your physical body, like, oh, this, you know, I, I run a lot, and there's just one ligament. It's like right. the uses are unending. And um, I just kind of had that moment myself. I just continually to have that moment where I was like, oh, it just makes so much sense. Like, where was this my whole life? <laughs> and uh, I definitely had that moment for weeks after that because it just like. For now, like a year after that event, um, my mind, like whenever there is like an obstacle or there's like a heavy decision to make, my mind goes straight into like, all right, we need to hunker down, we need to go into clear language mode, right. we're going to figure this out. Right. And now it's becoming habit. So you already know what's going on when that happens. Right. So in the beginning, it was more of like I had to force myself to do it. But you know, as I like went along, it's kind of like, okay, this is this is where it's at. You just had to slowly train your body to, you know, make this a process. And uh, through Spencer's help, I've been able to do that for most of my problem solving when it comes to you know, emotionally, uh, financially, and with business. And uh, it's definitely been like a huge asset. For so, what are some of the situations where you've used it, used precise language to? help you manage a otherwise difficult situation? So for me personally, um, I'm a little more, I guess not like unique, but like I, everybody has like that one thing where they have like a big issue with. And for me, it was just being honest with myself. And with clear language, it's like, here's a big flashlight. You're not gonna be able to hide from the truth after you like have this. And it was kind of like the moment, like I, I lied to myself a lot about certain things and then after like being able to speak clearly, like there wasn't really a place to hide uh, the way you feel about certain things or like, oh, I just like really like this one girl. And then you're like, well, do you actually really know why you like this one person? Or like, you know, why do you do other things and stuff like that? But for me, it was more of just being honest with myself. And um, in like the first like months of like adapting clear language, it was more of less like, okay, like, like it's like we need to be like more honest with ourselves and this was like a huge tool that like I use a lot which was just being really honest with myself and uh, there's not really a place to hide when you can't lie to yourself like right. and that's why it's much better to do it with somebody else and uh, they can kind of like hold you accountable and that's why I love having sessions with Spencer uh, because 
yeah, it's fun to do clear language by yourself and you know yourself. Um, but sometimes some things can slip to the cracks. You can just be a little dishonest about yourself. Um, and uh, that's why it's good to have somebody play the referee. Right. And and that's, uh, when you do a precise language session, like you always say, I always tell people it might feel like you're being controlled and you are by your own mind and you're going to take it out on me, but all I'm going to do is play referee you have as much permission to referee my language as I do yours or on an even playing field. But the reason that people start resenting uh, the referee is because they're under the assumption that they don't have control. And when that light, when that mirror is being put up to you and you get angry at what you see, it's not the mirror's fault. And a lot of people push back against that. And, and they do this with anyone who's being real with them, is they, they don't like what they see in the mirror and they just end up punching the mirror thinking it's they're yep. punching the person when in fact all you're doing is bloodying up your fist and requiring the need for a new mirror. And instead of taking a look and saying, you're reflecting something new at me because who we are as human beings is super dynamic. It's, it's multidimensional. So it's not just what you see is what you get, but what you see from each particular angle is who you are. And that's what a good coach does. That's what a good mentor does is, I had said this in some other podcasts, that why, why would you work with a mentor when knowledge has been commoditized by Google? And the difference is that a Google will give you knowledge, whereas a mentor will give you wisdom. And knowledge is going out and finding information on the outside and bringing it into the inside, where wisdom is asking the right questions to gain access to the knowledge inside and bringing that out to the world outside. And it's all about asking yourself the right questions. And that's why you would want to do precise language uh, in a one-on-one session with someone who understands it, or why you would want to do precise language in a group. You did the Invincible training, the master class, you know, in the yep. last uh, uh, winter semester that we did, or I guess it would be a quarter, not really a semester, it's only a couple months. But, um, but that's the value uh, of having a lot of people giving evaluations is because you get to see yourself at different angles of which you couldn't see yourself before. And that's the only thing that Google can do, right, is ask you questions. You can ask Google questions all day long, but it's not going to ask you anything. And, uh, and when you're able to speak clearly, because there's a difference between clear and precise language. Clear Important language is, yeah, is, right, clear language is, uh, is, the, is honoring the second rule of precise language. First rule is speak up. Speak clear, speak precise. Speaking clear is removing all of the voids, removing all of, removing, yeah, all of the void and only speak of what is. And then Mm -hmm. once you are speak precise, you start to fractal what is. Fractal and generalize, which are the opposite sides of the two same thing. Fractal is go down into the conversation, generalize is widen out, you Mm -hmm. know? And, uh, and, that's the, I lost track of my thought now that I was thinking about fractaling. But essentially, yeah, that's the, that's the point is to, oh yeah, when you speak clear, you see what is. And sometimes, even with that ability to see what is, it's still terrifying. <laughs> that's <laughs> you know? the truth right there. Right. And that's, that's why you have a community. That's why you have a, an yep. inner circle of friends. That is why you have your own council, or as like we used yeah. to call it in my family for my dad, he had his cabinet, you know, <laughs> the, the, the series of experts that he would go to ask the questions that he needed to find, you know, that, you know, the answers. Uh, and the, yeah, that's why that's so important. No, yeah, I, I can't agree more. Um, it, I would say like doing clear language, like for me personally, I like doing it for like more things that just involve me. Uh, but if it's like something that's, involves more people where it's like a business decision or it's like a family decision. I like to consult with either you or somebody in my family or close friends groups that kind of get it. Um, but then again, it's, it's it, for me, it's more for just like internal decision makings. Uh, I'm not sure that's proper grammar, but you get the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, that's, I, I completely agree. Um, 
I think there has to be like a level of people that you have to go through to be able to like make a decision uh, and right. not just like leave it up to yourself. Um, yeah, but for me, clear language when it comes to smaller decisions, like um, you know, where am I going to move? Like moving to Florida, like that was that was that was a pretty big uh, clear language thing because I had to you had to assess like what do I really want and is this right. going to help me get what I want? And right. you're not always going to answer it in one session. You right. got to be patient. And sometimes you're not going to figure it out in the same session. It right. requires a lot of patience. I remember the first time doing clear language, I didn't talk for hours. Yeah. There wasn't, you, you just get stopped. And you're like, okay, well, I need to figure some stuff out. And then you know, reconvene, you get a little further. And um, you don't usually go from point A to point B. You know, it's kind of a journey. You know, it, there's a lot of self-discovery that's involved because you're finding out stuff about right. yourself that you were hiding. And you're like, right. whoa, like this was actually in there and now I just basically took all this stuff out and it's like, all right, right. what are you going to do about it? Like, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, exactly. And, so that, and that's why it's good to have uh, somebody like Spencer um, because he's like, okay, well, what do you want to do about this? Like, right. What does this mean to you? And yeah. uh, that's why you need a coach Yeah, and it, uh, somebody to walk you through. You know, I was, uh, I had had, I had had, jeez, I had a conversation with Leaf about precise language and utilizing your gifts and magnifying them as opposed to suppressing your tendencies and then and balancing out where your tendencies go too far and precise language does that and i when we and you had first met i mean you're rather young you're 21 right now yeah, yeah just I, I mean i met you when you were 19 18 it's been three years it has wow it's been three years three years and, Spencer. And if you had any tendency uh, that, like a diagnose, not and not diagnosed, but a classified tendency, it would probably be more towards ADHD, where you've That's got a, right. a, 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 lot, a lot of ideas and a lot of ideas with a lot of energy. And before I get into how, because a lot of people experience ADHD, where it's as you're talking, you're constantly interrupting yourself with your own thoughts. When you get excited about something, you just continue to, to kind of go and go up about it. And it's that kind of, uh, uh, kind of that, the motor mouth syndrome, right? Yeah. Where, uh, and again, everyone deals with that on, or a lot of people deal with that on some type of yeah. level. Explain how precise language has helped contain that type of energy for you. Yeah, so little context. Uh, I'm the youngest out of a lot of siblings, so you have to fight for attention when you're, you know, the youngest out of six. Yeah. Uh, so there's a tendency to feel that all your ideas are important and that everybody else has to hear them. Otherwise, there's no self-value to those mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. So going through that, you just have to ask your question, like, you know, why do I do this? You know, it's not always like, a, oh, because I just do. There's always a reason for it. And finding that reason is a hard thing to do. If it's, you know, based off your identity, because, you know, it's who I am and well, who, who I was, uh, just like with sports and religion and everything like that, you know, when you attack that identity, you know, there's going to be a little retaliation. That's just how it is. When you're say, if you're, a, if you're at like a baseball game, let alone the Cubs game, when they're about to win the World Series, you're like, oh, it's just a game. In reality, it is. You're right. But to them, like, that's who they identify with. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was like kind of like a long journey to kind of get past that about like, you know, maybe, you know, there's a few good ideas in there, but like, you know, let's, let's keep it to ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then just kind of ponder on it. But those are clearly which kind of helped me figure out that, you know, not everything has to be said and right. here's why. So that's yeah. uh, one of the many boundaries that uh, clear language helped me get through. Yeah. It's definitely the uh, ADHD part. Yeah. You know, a lot of people struggle at the first level of speak up so many people struggle dude and i'll tell you what you did not struggle in that area <laughs> you, you, you would speak up at any and every opportunity and i'll tell you this uh, what's harder to to polarize to balance out so someone who doesn't speak up to get them to speak up or someone who speaks up too much and get them to slow down it's much harder to get someone to speak up that doesn't because yeah. numb, numb is way, way more detrimental than yeah. crazy. It, it, it really is. And 
you know, one of the, the, the cocktail of attributes that you have, which was one, a brilliant technical side to you. Uh, you understand things and can articulate them on a technical level that is very granular and, uh, and it holds a lot of value when it comes to a particular craft. Uh, and then on the other hand, uh, not on the other hand, but in addition to that, you have the attribute of, uh, um, uh, being validated for for your brilliance for the the attribute that you that you know that you're the furthest along in in terms of mastery and when those th when those two things come together they can they can turn into just you know talking a lot and when you actually did take a look at it and you were like and i remember in the precise language session that we did at the immersion where i was telling you to internalize your words yeah and and basically, what I had no, what I had Noah do was, you, you basically didn't talk during that whole thing. Yeah. And went now. Don't talk is a void. So if you right. recall, right. the directive was allow your words to flow internally. Yeah. And what that's doing when someone has it's it's polarizing your attributes. And it, it went to show, like, instead of giving yourself to the world for validation, similar to what we would call a slut, you know, <laughs> male or female, but, but, but basically yeah. uh, it's just like giving your value to anyone because the way you receive value is by, by receiving the, their reaction to what you're doing. And instead, I, I was like, give it to you. Like impress yourself with your brilliance. And as that, as you did that, you started to realize like, oh shit, I am brilliant. And I can see that without having to hear it from another person. I can see that for myself. And when, after that, after the immersion, literally after that day, I noticed a huge shift in you in, in, in the way that you communicated your thoughts. And what, what, what happened is, what I, at least what I noticed, and you can verify this if it's true or not, is that you would spend a lot more time evaluating and filtering your brilliance. So when you did say, say something, it would be a condensed version of that brilliance in a shorter time. So it was just so much more potent. And I, I noticed that our work together got a whole lot better. Oh, yeah, uh, it did. Like, oh, yeah, uh, did. I mean, your, your life- Way more productive. Your life literally has taken off since the immersion. I mean, shit, shit, man. You've you've moved out of your uh, you've moved out of your parents' house. You moved to Florida. You started a whole new uh, you know endeavor. You're happier than ever. You're more mot motivated than ever. And the, you know when we have our precise language sessions, when you you know when we do a little clarity session or a breakthrough session, yeah. like it's it's evident that you're asking the right questions. You and again, you you're using our interactions. You're using me as a mirror, as a tool opposed to using me as a drug that solves your problem. And that's yep. how you know someone is, gets it yep. when they're starting to learn how to, to ma manage themselves. So the way I've, I've been putting it is like, you are your own general physician, but you will go to a specialist. Yep. You, know, exactly. uh, you know, imagine if a general physician goes to uh, a dermatologist, he can give you what you need to hear, not just say my skin's itchy and red. Like he can say, okay, I'm you know, connect the dots and be able to yeah. get a better diagnosis. And you, you've done exactly that. And, and the change was drastic. And what has been so great to watch in your development, dude, over the past three years is, uh, is the evidence of that change. Watching you deal with family situations that are extremely intense <sighs> and handle them with, with, with empathy and grace and uh, and not and preemptive uh, behavior as opposed to reactive. It's yeah. it's just been really great to see. Well, thanks. I really appreciate the kind yeah. words. Um, but you know, I I do want to say, and I think you mentioned this actually, and I always refer to this you know whenever I'm whenever I'm talking to somebody about this. But everybody has like little jumps in maturity as they go along with their age. Mm -hmm. And when I met Spencer, I just had like a. <laughs> 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 I'm not joking. You. Uh, but yeah, it. I don't. It, it's. I'm. I'm a little bit of a different per person from Spencer because you've documented your whole entire life. Yeah. Like, I, I in notebooks. <laughs> for, for right there. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's. 
it's not as much, but there I, I don't I've documented very little of it in writing, but I've documented a lot of it in photos and videos and stuff like that because that's what I do. And um, the time like before I met Spencer is like when I think about you know whenever you put yourself how much I say this whenever you go into like a previous mindset or like you look back at an old picture you're like oh what was I thinking <laughs> and like it's not something that's like changed so much and you know, whenever I look at pictures like before I met Spencer and even like like months ago like so much has changed like I can't imagine what I was thinking or how I was operating right. like before like just having like just like a little bit of coaching and just to push in the right direction and it wasn't it was more or less just hey stupid like go in this direction <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> more or less it was a little bit of hard love but it was it was what was needed and that was what was necessary and uh as little as possible and as much as necessary and that's the way i like to refer to it um but yeah it's i i don't remember how i was thinking after uh, like before yeah. i got to play language it's yeah. it's really weird and it like is. you have those jumps in maturity and you just kind of leave the, your past self behind, but you're still like, oh, that was cool. But this is much better now. I'm much more comfortable. You know, I know what I'm <laughs> thinking up here. You know, there's things going on. I know what to do. And it's just like, I feel much more like an adult. Yeah. And, you know, you have that transition from like, like teenager to adult. Yeah. You help a lot with that. <laughs> yeah. That's great too. That's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. yeah and but you're right. I am happy. I'm a lot happier out here. And like I said, the decision to come out here and just like completely change everything. That that decision to do that had to be very, very clear. Right. Like I had to be very, very clear with myself and with what I wanted to do. And I took the step and uh, it was great. Yeah. I want to go back to the point where you were talking about tough love. Oh, yeah. And this is probably the hardest uh, notion <laughs> when, it, when it comes to when it comes to students because when you first learn precise language it's like this magical little toy because legitimately it's like rubbing a magic genie and saying okay say exactly what you want and then you say it and then some stuff happens you know you close your eyes and you open them up and they're there it's there yeah, yeah. and you know and it it continues to get more complicated as you have bigger dreams, but nevertheless, yeah. that's what it is. And as you get better at using precise language and doing it on a consistent basis, like it's just like anything that you have to practice it so it becomes a part of you. Yeah. Uh, you get, you come to a point where it's, you know, you get stuck in a loop where you're yeah. going through the same struggles over and over and over again. Yeah. Yep. And last this month is starting to look like last month. And yep. it looked like the month be before. And last week is starting to look like this week. And today is starting to look yep. like yesterday. And it's all the same struggles. And uh, you want someone to either fix it for you or just allow you to complain about it. And I always allow a certain amount of complaining because you should. Negative emotions are totally part of the experience. And that, that's, I want to make a side note on the difference between precise language and negative talk. Yep. Negative self-talk is productive. Like, you're a piece of shit, Spencer. That's yeah. clear language. That's truth. What that's is, where it's at. What did I do that makes me a piece of shit? Okay. There, there you go. There, there you go. Now, you now the magic we, sauce. Now we can have a conversation about it. So, there you like, go. it's not about staying positive all the time. It's like, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's not about that at all because a lot of times you do that to avoid yourself. I'm not, uh, I'm not a fill in the blank. Like that, that's vague. So no, yeah. I want to know what you are. And if that's yeah. a piece of shit, then, then that's a piece of shit. Right. And as a coach, my job is not to help you. My job is not to solve your problem. My job is not to make you happy. My job is not even necessarily to be good to you. As a coach, I mean, as a coach, here's how, the, here's how the values are ordered, or as we call them, values, which is your beliefs in sequence. Mm -hmm. Be honest. Be good to you. Okay? Then make you happy. And I won't sacrifice the first two. for I, I won't sacrifice 
a, a previous one for a lower ranked value yep. for me. And sometimes that is being a little bit harsh. But that's what's required because harshness is part of, of discipline. And if you want to get to that adult level, that ascended adult level, it's about parenting. It's self-parenting. And good parents are firm with their kids. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. And so when I'm working with someone, especially someone who's young, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard because you have to be firm. But what that's demonstrating is this is the way you need to be with yeah. your integrity. Because, yeah. because that, that's the game. Are you who you say you 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 are? Yep. And that and if and that's what precise language is all about. Get you to understand that that's the point. Yeah. Your intentions, your words, your actions are all the same thing. And as long as they are, I'm proud of you. Now, I still might think you're a piece of shit because if you say that like I want I want to be a professional professional bamboozler and bamboozle people out of their money. And I'm going to work hard to become the best bamboozler and bamboozle all day long. And if I ask you, oh, is that really what you want to be? And you're like, yes. So, okay. So Let's do it. And then I, I, I meet up with you a week later. I'm like, what did you do this week? This last week, you're like, well, I... Bamboozle, bamboozle, bamboozle. bamboozle. Bam- yep, uh, all day long. Uh, I, you, have, you have my respect, but... What do I think of you? Well, I think bamboozling is, is wrong. I think there are more honest ways to make money than bamboozling. But nevertheless, <laughs> you are a perfect being. A perfect piece of shit, nonetheless. But you are a perfect being. And, the, and, and that's the game. And once you realize, first of all, how to actually speak. Because only until you can speak can you manifest things into existence. And then exactly. once, once you speak, are you accountable to your word? Because that, honestly, that's, that's all I care about. You are yeah. that, who you say you are. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it's like whatever you're going to be, be good at it. So, you know, just like you were saying in episode three and episode two um, of Clear Language is that you have to speak it for it to have, you know, to even start. Like you have to get this out here. And it has, has to go from that order. And the, like you were talking about with the table, like the one I'm using like right now, um, it has to go from the mind to your mouth mouth muscles to articulating it to other people that way it has value because it right. doesn't matter how good the ideas are or what you're thinking about if you can't explain it you know nobody else is going to get it let alone yourself so i think uh definitely i mean like you have to you have to do what you say you're going to do like it's like you already went like two steps like getting it from here to here but you have to do the rest right <laughs> so and that's where the respect comes in you have to like you're talking about, like you'll have great respect for me if I was bamboozling somebody, but I'll probably be a piece of shit. Right. You probably wouldn't be my friend in the first place. <laughs> right. Or, or I, I mean, I would be. I have friends that are bamboozlers, but then, but at oh, least I know. Me. I know. No. But at least I know you're <laughs> honest. So I know. I know at what distance to keep them, so I can still love them, but still be protected from them. Mm. And and again, if you're if you're an honest criminal, I'll take an honest criminal. Over, uh, over a petty liar any day of the week, man. Because at, at, mm-hmm. least, at least you know what you're getting. And, uh, and, and, the, and the thing is, is like this whole ascension process of humanity, or what I call the golden age, right? That's coming. Mm-hmm. Is where it's this perfect balance to where we all have our free will that's respected, but we share some type of objective truth. And again, this is why I'm such a big fan of blockchain technologies because it is, it is a shared reality of truth. And we are social creatures that are dying to be unified. Uh, that, that's honestly all of the fighting that we see in this world is really, is really us wanting to be unified. Kind of like when, you, uh, you know, when a girl slaps you and a, guy, and a little boy pulls her hair. Like, it's because they like each other uh, but they, and they don't know how to handle it. We, do that as adults, except for we have like really expensive weapons and, and, uh, and stuff, but we, we, we want to be connected. And the way to be connected is to have a shared, have some type of shared reality so we can be operating on the same page. Yep. And, and again, when you have, uh, when you have 
when you use precise language, that's what you have. Now, we think that we, that we you know, me and you speak the same language because we're speaking English. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Like we are, we're using, we're using so many terms that we're, that, that yep. are, that, uh, that have a lot of loaded assumptions in them. When you call me an asshole, like really, what does that mean? Like uh, for everybody, it's different. So like asshole in English means this asshole in English can mean something completely different. It, it, yep. it works down. And so we have to learn if you want to be able to communicate with another human, you have to learn how to understand their language and to understand someone's language. All you need to do is to be able to articulate the, the s symbols that are coming out of their mouth and then be able to translate a meaning to that. And so when I say that you're an asshole, what I mean by that is you are a person who acts out of evil intent. That's what I mean. That's specific. That's specific. That's, now, that's true. And, and, and now your concept of, of asshole is someone who's mean to somebody. And yeah. what, when I say mean to someone, it's like, well, so that you hurt someone's feelings. So by definition, if my girl asks me, do I look fat in this dress? And I say, it makes you look like you're heavier than you actually are. Okay. That might hurt her feelings. Okay. And so by your definition, that's an asshole. By my definition, I wasn't acting out of evil intent. I was acting out of honesty and I said it as nice as I could. I'm not an asshole. Yeah. And so who's right? Both of us. It, it just depends on the, on the definition. Yeah. And what, what clear language does is in communications between two people or in communications between you and the world around you, there is this shared reality of, def, of definition. And if there isn't, that's when you fractal. What do you mean yeah. by that? What, what do you mean by asshole? You know, yeah, there's fractal and then there's being precise. Um, and just like you're talking about with, you know, what does asshole mean uh, on the wall over there? Uh, Cliff and I were actually working on, um, you know, like, what does the word love mean? So we went to a dictionary. Well, I guess you could say that uh, we found like six different words, uh, Greek words, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like arrows, uh, agape. And these are all different types of love. So when you say like you love somebody, like you love food or like you love your brother or like you love uh, like somebody of the opposite sex, like there's like words for all those things. Like if you have like a deep love for like your brothers and like uh, that, that there's a type of love for that. So like we can be even more specific. There's words for everything. There's a word for every type of feeling. Um, that's why I like German because there's words you can say that you can't say in English. But then again, we can get around that by being precise. Right. By, yeah, by being descriptive. By being descriptive. That right. way we can get around it. So um, when you say asshole, there's a variety of different things that come to my <laughs> mind. Because I'm like, oh, Spencer would probably think of asshole as this thing. Or right. my mom would think asshole as something like this. And then there's somebody that's actually thinking the literal term of asshole. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's like there's a lot of confusion going on. And one of my favorite examples is that you, that you told me I remember one of our se first sessions was um, – uh, asking your girl where she wants to eat where she's like okay where do you want to eat she's like i don't know well i don't know anything so you're like oh do you want to eat chipotle if you say no or i don't know i still don't know where you want to eat so we're not right. getting anywhere right. so it's like here's your list of options pick if you don't we're gonna go to where i want right <laughs> so that's just like one situation where you shouldn't have to use clear language <laughs> uh but sometimes it can come in handy for that part <laughs> right yeah and, and you know i was talking about this with uh, I think in the in the podcast that I, I did with Leaf is like it, it doesn't you don't really require it doesn't pardon me you don't have to have the other person participate in precise language in order for it to be effective on your ability to handle that so yep. let, let's say you're like where do you want to be where do you, where do you want to eat and your significant other is being uh, Kind of a journey. Difficult. Yeah, diff there you go. Difficult. That's more objective for sure. Uh, <laughs> and, and they're like, well, I don't know. Then you can say, do you want Chipotle? Which is specific. Mm, no. Well, then you can kind of generalize, which is the opposite of, uh, of fractaling. Uh, yeah. Do you want Mexican food? Mm, I don't know. Are you hungry? Yes. Okay. Better question. So, all right. So so now way we, better question. Yeah, so now we've we've uh, we've generalized as much as we can between the binary one or zero. I'm hungry. One zero. I'm not. Are you hungry? Yes. Okay. So are you in the mood? Are you in the mood for something uh, savory? 
and, and, and decadent, or do you want something kind of like light and healthy? And you give them the choice, uh, light and healthy. Okay. Are you feeling something? And you, you can keep going down. Now, whether you're dealing with a significant other that's being difficult, or you're dealing with a child, or you're dealing with someone who's having a hard time making a decision on whether to be in a relationship or not. So like I've dealt with this a, a hundred times as I've administered many breakup pills in my day. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I offer a complete mind rewiring experience uh, through a breakup <laughs> that literally gets you over your ex in a single session. So um, hit me up in the DM for that one. I don't offer them on the <laughs> website. It's super powerful to bring up that. So I mean, so oh the, my the God. first question is, is like, okay, do you, what, should you continue to be in a relationship with that person? And I, well, I don't know. Okay, so now we got to go. go back up, right? <laughs> so now how do I generalize that as much as I can? Should you be in a relationship at all? Even if it's the ideal person, should you be in a relationship? If the answer is no, well then, boom, there's our answer right there. Yes. Okay. Now ask this question. Is this the ideal relationship for you? Hmm. No. What, what is it about this relationship that you would change if you had your ideal? That's all. It's a precise way of saying what's yep. wrong with this person. Because mm. um, nothing's wrong. Everything's true. From, everything's right from some perspective. So. Yep. And then they, they go into that. What, then they go, well, you know, they're, they're a smoker. Okay. Is the, and now you can start asking questions. Is this is smoking more important to you than whatever value you know makes you think that smoking is is mm. bad, right? And you could start breaking breaking that down, but you can start by generalizing out in a wide way, and then and then fragmenting. Yeah. But the good news is, if that person does understand precise uh, precise language, then all the better. The only thing, yeah. the, the only difference between uh, between that is. Uh, as someone who who knows precise language and someone who doesn't is just the amount of time that it takes in order for that problem to be solved. Because if you do know precise language, what typically takes ten hours of talking about can be managed in thirty minutes. Yep. Yeah. And uh, back to it when we say that you need a coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's definitely good to have somebody, not a coach, a referee. Because like you're talking about, which I was going to mention earlier, was that it's not necessarily you're like the cure-all, fix-all. Like you're just there to help them like move the conversation with themselves along. So, you know, like with myself, you know, I'll get stumped all the time. I'm like, ah, like I just don't know what to like do next, you know. And then since it can be like, okay, well then like we need to like step back. Like, you know, what's, what's important about this, you know, what uh, – for like better words. But yeah uh, – just to re what's the word i'm looking for reinforce the whole second person the whole uh referee part but just because it's you're not like the the fixer right. that you just help it go along the way it's supposed to and um that's why i call you there's some there's just some things i can't fix and that's right. why you talk to that's why you talk to brandon there's just some things you can't do yourself that right. you, know, you just really need a second opinion with. Yeah. but i agree with you with the breakup pill sort of thing that uh, clear language will literally destroy any help, any like false hope you have for somebody. Where you're like, I just really like this person, and you're just like scared to have that conversation with yourself about it. You're like, ah, dang it, you know, I don't really like this person, or, right. or for just for all the wrong reasons. Right. That's one of the things that that's one of the things clear language has really messed up was the dating life. You know, I found out I was liking people for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Hey, dude, you say you wake up call. You, and you said, I mean, yeah. if I, I can just imagine, like anyone listening to this, if someone could have saved you for from, or someone could give you could have given you the realization that you were liking people for the wrong reasons, like how much heartache, how much time, how much wasted opportunity would you have eliminated from your life? Oh my gosh! It, Don't it, get me started. It really, it really is a. Uh, a super useful relationship governor and I would say I don't want to say that it's it's more useful in one area than any other one but relationships are really important they're uh, they're one of the very few things that you don't have complete control over in this mm -hmm. uh, in this world because there's a yep. whole nother creator on the other side of it that has its own free will 
whereas the rest of the universe uh, is a reactionary mechanism. Like you, you, you do this, that is guaranteed to happen. Where relationships, it's not. And so it, it's really, it's really tough to manage relationships because sometimes loving someone is taking a step back. Sometimes loving someone is creating a boundary. I told uh, Nico in one, of the, in one of the podcasts I did with him that my parents, after my company went under, I lost my, my privilege to drive and I was being kicked out of my house, told me that they weren't going to lend me any more money. Mm. And, you know, was that because my parents were emotionally fed up with me and they just couldn't take it anymore? No, that was actually them loving me. That was them saying, you can do this and you need to learn or else you're going to keep asking for handouts. And it, and it was one of the most loving things that, that someone's done for me. You know, when I was younger, my parents never complimented me. They never told me I was good looking. They never told me I was charming. They never told me I was smart. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, I didn't know that about I, you. Yeah, they never. And it was like, I remember, uh, I remember I was 21 years old and I think I made 20 or 30 grand in a month. And I was like, just dying for my parents' approval. And it's just like, it was like, good, but nah, you know. And I, a few years ago, probably five or six years ago, I had a conversation with my mom. And she's like, the reality is, we know of which level of intelligence and handsomeness and charmingness you are. But the rest of the world is going to judge you for that. I wanted, we wanted to judge you based on your character, on your behavior, the way that you treated people, the way that you were considerate. Because what if, what if you get in an accident and it takes away your face and you're no longer handsome? Yep. What if, what if you, uh, you go deaf and you can no longer talk, you're no longer charming? Like, what are the things that can't be taken away from you unless your life is taken from you? And that is your character, who you are. And yep. so if the rest of the world is going to judge you, of whether you're pretty or handsome, smart or stupid, all of that, we're going to judge you on that. And I was like, shit, I've been so mad for so long. Of like, and they were always supportive, like no matter what, it, no matter what it was, they would support me. If I was like, hey, I want to I wanna be an astronaut. They would like, we support your ability, we support you being an astronaut. If I would have asked them, do you think I'll really become an astronaut? They would not be like, oh, you can do anything you said. They'd be like, ah, <laughs> ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't try it's it not out. for me to decide. <laughs> yeah, right. It's for NASA to decide. And, and, and all I wanted was just like, just tell me I can do it. No, you, you tell you you can do it. Now, here's the thing, like for the first 80% of my life, I thought they were making a mistake. They weren't, man. Like I, it, it I, and th they had to literally put up with, uh, you know, a hint of resentment. I have a very good relationship with my family and my parents, but they had to deal with that, knowing that at at some point, that I, I would I would come around. And even if I didn't, they were doing it simply because it was best for me. And that, like, man, that, that just that just demonstrates of like, of it's it's not just about getting what you want it's doing what's doing what's best and yep. it, and that comes before doing what's best comes before making yourself happy yeah um cliff and i were talking about this actually um i think this is a pretty big um like this was a, a question for the myers-briggs personality type it was a really important question it asked you do you want your kids to be smart or kind and that's a that's a pretty big decision you have to make as a parent so I think I, I can agree with you like I, I, I kind of hold some resentment for my parents for not being like you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah you can totally be the best you know <laughs> right. astronaut or whatever you wanted to be or a skateboarder or whatever you wanted to be but like could you do it I'm not going to tell you no or yes <laughs> right. that's, it's for you to decide uh -huh. And uh, I didn't know that about you, but thanks for sharing that. But uh, uh, that, that kind of reminded me of that question, like, do you want your kids to be smart or do you want them to be kind? And uh, I guess that hits a little close to home. Yeah. And here's the thing, man, like, smart can be taught. Yeah. Kind is, that's hard, man. That's hard. 
it's hard to, to instill kindness in, uh, you know, in a child. And, and again, to, to do that, to instill kindness in a child, like you have to show them kindness. Yeah. Truly what, what, what goodness is. And again, kindness is not all, I guess kindness and goodness are, are two different things, but it's, you want people to be good to people. And sometimes that's setting hard boundaries, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. For sure, man. That's, that's the game of life. Yeah. You know, like, who do you, who do you be nice to? Yeah, you know, there's a level of, of, like, kindness that I see you give towards everybody. Mm-hmm. And then, then there's different levels of it. I think everybody just kind of learns that as they go along, but everybody experiences it differently. Yeah. And, um, Back on the subject of subject of clear language, all I gotta say is uh, probably wouldn't be here without you. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother. I really, I really no. do. At the end of the day, once you become self sufficient as an adult, you're paying your bills, you have your friends, you know, you're you're stable somewhat. And again, that could be making $30,000 a year or $300,000 a year. It depends on what your lifestyle is. But ultimately, yeah, what, do you, like, what do you mean by adult? <laughs> yeah, what I, mean, what I mean is like stable according to society, right? Mm. You can, you're stable enough to hold a job. You're stable enough to pay your bills. You're stable enough to maintain relationships. What next? Yeah, that's a big question. It's what does God do when he's bored? Well, one of two things. He either contemplates chaos and figures some way to turn it into order in a way that's pleasing to himself, herself, itself. Or God breaks shit (laughs) when, when God is bored. And all of us are little tiny slices of the universe that get permission to call itself God for a very short amount of time, we have the ability uh, to to move. We have the ability to exist, or exist 1D, the ability to move 2D, the ability to to, to speak and to be honest and deceive 3D. And we have the ability to be good or bad 4D. when you get to that point, sometimes you ha- you've got to make a choice. Am I going to go down the path of self-destructive behavior, which sometimes is in doing whatever distracts you to become numb? Or are you going to upgrade your software, upgrade the way that you perceive the world, and start taking all of the, all of the, the problems in life that are outside Basic, you know, basic stability, and create something new that has that has an effect on people that either inspires them or it serves them or, or it helps them, and all of this, all of that starts with self awareness, and that's really where we started our conversation, which which is like, the ability to just say, okay, what's going on, you know? Yeah, I do have one thing to add though, mm-hmm. like. Once, when you get like clear with clear, clear language, clear, clear lingo, as I like to call it in the colloquial English terms, uh, you get kind of scared, scared of it. Like, just to be, just to be like, just throw that out there, just to be honest. Because like, whenever there's something that I'm like holding on to, where I'm like, yeah, and I just like kind of ignore. Like, <laughs> you ever find yourself doing that? Where it's just oh like, God. I know I'm so very wrong about this decision, <laughs> and it's like I already know that I'm wrong about it because I'm thinking about avoiding the session that I'm gonna have later <laughs> with it. So that's the one thing I have to add about. It. Uh, you know, it's kind of forced me. That it's like I, I'm trying to build like the process in my mind to like immediately address it whenever something like that comes up where it's like, okay, if I like am thinking the thought of avoiding this, then I definitely have to talk about it. Uh, well with myself and, um, the same thing goes with, um, uh, they say that the first thought that comes to your mind and the thought following after it is maturity. 
So the first thought, if you look at somebody with like tattoos, like if you're taught like a kid like I was, like tattoos are bad, you know. If you were raised Christian like me, we were in one of those churches where they're all like, oh, tattoos are bad. You're going to go to hell if you get tattoos. So that, that, that sort of thing. And then the second thought, you know, after like I was like 18 and realized that people with tattoos like are no less of sinners than everybody else. And then the second thought because on top of that, which is that's okay. Right. And so just trying to build that for many different things that clear language has an impact on. Because it's like, oh, if I'm like avoiding the conversation that I'm going to have with myself later, I need to build that second thought right on top of it to address it right away. And that's something I'm still doing to this day, like years after our, our the first time I was introduced to clear language. Like it's a journey. Like you're never just like no clear language and then, you know, you have it and you're just thinking clearly all the time. It's a journey. Like right. you know, you know this. It's not like always like that, but it's like every day you're always getting better. Like every session that you have with somebody else, you're like, give me those, give me the monsters. Like right. it's, it's just how you get better. And one way to get better at everything is just to keep doing it. So right. like if you haven't like been honest with yourself for a good solid month, you can have a good time with yourself when you're having a clear language session. Yeah. So. Well, and, and, that's all I got to say about that. And that's it's a great point to to round this thing out, man. Because I had, I can't remember which uh, podcast I had talked about this, but not everybody is ready for a breakthrough. Nope. Not everybody's Completely ready to agree. have their their problem solved. And yep. there are so many times that, especially after knowing precise language and being able to implement it and see its effect. You see someone struggling and you're like, ah, if you would just do this, you would be, you would be free. People are in love with their monsters, including me. And you should be. They're part of you. Yep. But you want to be a controlled monster. And sometimes in life, part of your story is those monsters playing. And, you know, Noah, you are one of the younger students that, uh, that I've ever worked with. And so and to force that maturity upon you is something that I have to constantly be like wondering if I'm just pushing my 34 year old agenda on a 21 year old guy because most people in the academy are you know between the ages of yeah, 20, close to your age. yeah 26 to 46 right got another 10 years on top of me yeah, right exactly and uh and so if this is there are some people that are going to be watching these podcasts and they're in the knowledge collection phase of their life where they're just learning, 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 but not a whole lot of implementing. Yeah. And if you're in that cycle and you're watching this, I want to encourage you to start taking some actions to see how you respond to implementing. But don't feel so guilty that if, if you're not ready yet. Um, but I would encourage you to take a look at yourself Get in your notebook, as I have wherever I'm at, and start asking yourself these questions. Well, what are you ready for? When are you going to be ready for something to change? And in the strategy sessions that I do with people, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the question. Like, okay, now that we've figured out what's wrong, how, how much longer are you willing to put up with this? How much longer? You know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't in great shape physically until uh, this past year. And I started in February, like really getting back on the, on the weight training. I saw. And I, saw. I, yeah. and I am now in the best shape of, that I've been in for the past seven or eight years. And uh, a lot of demons in that fitness realm for me because you know, I had a whole career, a whole other life in that, yeah. in that realm on top of you know, physically being sick a lot and my body being destroyed after I worked so hard to build it up. Mm-hmm. And I decided now this this has got to, this has got to change now. And do I wish I would have started a little bit earlier? Sure, there's some some of that. But was I ready? No, I wasn't. And so when I was ready, I made the decision, and then I made a move on it. So if if you're watching here and you're ready for that next step in your life to upgrade your software to no longer just be thinking about how do I get, 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 but how do I become a better me? How do I become, become, become? Then I want to invite you to do a strategy session with me. Now, no, I think that you filled out the personal inventory assessment 
where you go through all of the questions. I, I call it going through the mansion of your mind uh, and walking through, which is your existence, and walking through and turning on the lights in each room, the lights that represent your health, the, that re represent your love life, your spiritual life, your relationship with yourself, your, you know, all of the elements of life, and going in and asking the critical questions and essentially uh, doing, a, doing a, what, an inspection of that, of that home, of that mansion in your mind, that, that beingness that's you, and asking the questions like, what would I like to change? What are the areas of my life that are negatively affecting other areas of my life? And in the strategy session that I do with, that I do with my students, we mm -hmm. take a look at that assessment and then have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to help you calibrate your, your compass due north and then create some action steps of things that you can do, measurable things, to make sure that you're constantly moving forward towards that next level, that next version of you, towards that, that next level of success, that next achievement, whatever it is. So if you can relate to whatever we've talked about in this conversation, then I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to where you can do a private strategy session uh, with me and you can experience some of the stuff that we've been talking about with precise language and you know, personal awareness and responsibility. So uh, that said, Noah, I wanna thank you so much for doing this call with me, man. Uh, it, My pleasure. It's, it's been a joy. The video quality on your end is as high as I thought it would be. And if you guys like this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this and be kept up to date, be sure to subscribe to the Invincible Academy YouTube channel and be sure to hit that notification bell so you're part of our, what do they call it on YouTube? The subscription squad, the notification squad. Is that all right? You know, you're a part of the notification squad. You clicked, yeah, you clicked. You it. know, I am. That's how you. That's how you know how to reference all of the precise language podcasts that, that we've I've done. seen them. Have you <laughs> seen them? I, I, I have. I have seen them. And I, I ironically watch my channel uh, probably more than most people. It's, it's all like little memories of really great conversations and experiences that I've had. But uh, I want to thank you again, Noah, for coming on to my channel and sharing with everyone your experiences with precise language. And, my pleasure. Uh, and until next time, this is Spencer Burnett with the Invincible Academy. I'm out. Peace, buddy. Yeah.